Looking down from the hills near Yen An, it's easy to miss the hamlet of Rentai. Its 100 inhabitants live in caves dug from the same yellow earth they depend on for their living. They grow enough grain and vegetables to feed themselves, and a few pigs, and sheep. Here, grain is milled much as it has been for centuries. Average income in Rentai is about 9 US dollars a month, $3 less than the national rural average, and a tenth of what a factory worker in Shanghai earns. But the village head says things are getting better. Income has doubled over the past five years, and they can now afford chemical fertilizers. They've heard there's money in apples, and have recently planted apple trees for extra income. The idea came from a few miles away, from Miao Go, the richest village in the area. Here, the average income is nearly $50 a month, four times the national rural average. Since it started selling apples five years ago, Miao Go's income has increased sevenfold. Everyone now eats and dresses better, and some have even moved from caves to brick houses. Yet there's no telephone, and power is irregular. Water is drawn by hand, and collecting firewood is a daily chore. Just like in Rentai. Here, entertainment, like food, is traditionally homegrown. But while children still play with pig's knuckles, the countryside's new prosperity has brought new amusements. Like four-fifths of China's peasants, the villagers of Rentai have access to television. It's a black and white one with poor reception, but it still shows the same dramas, news and advertisements seen on the coast. It may also be fostering the same expectations. This TV owner can't read or write, but has high hopes for her children. I want my three children to go to university. Yang's television symbolizes the dilemma of China's rural development. It's proof of the peasants' progress, but also shows them how much better their cousins on the coast are doing. But in Beijing, China's leaders realize that though the standard of living here is rising, it may not be rising fast enough. The economic gap between China's interior and its coastal provinces is growing, and expectations here are rising. New policies are shifting investment incentives from the coast to the interior, and Beijing is leading the way by favoring the countryside in infrastructure spending. In the last few years, Yan An has gained a new train station, a new school, a new power plant, and a new highway to link it to the provincial capital, Xi'an. But so far, all the money has come from the state or international bodies like the World Bank. We would welcome private investors here, but of course, we're not ready yet. Like much of China's interior, Shanxi's best prospects for development lie in its natural resources. Foreign oil companies are starting to show interest, and trucks are already using the new road to transport coal. But the pace of change is slow, and is being allowed to be so. China tried to force rural development by diktat in the 1960s, and it didn't work. Observers say Beijing now realizes its limitations. I really don't believe they could do it faster. There is a certain sense of impatience often that they're not doing enough or that the inland provinces aren't developing quickly enough. This type of transition unfortunately does take uh, literally decades. There are drawbacks to China's new market economy too. Take Yan'an's airport. There were five flights a week, but now, because there aren't enough passengers, there's only one. These days, the runway is used by children making their own attempt at flight and by peasants taking a shortcut home. A reminder, it might be some time before China's interior really takes off. Robert Stern, CNBC Business News, Shanxi Province, China.